Welcome along guys. Well this is the video I've been promising you for a few weeks now. This is the direct comparison between the Tuono 660 and the RS660. I've had both of these bikes for the last week with me from Wheels Motorcycles. Massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles. Check out the links below to them. But these are their demos. They've dropped them both down to me. So I'm going to bring you today in this video a direct comparison between the Tuono 660 and the RS660. What's the differences between the bikes? How do they feel different when riding them? So you can help make a decision of which one should you buy. So without further ado, let's crack on and Chopsy, roll that intro. So to start, let's kick off with the Tuono. Sounds good, huh? So both of these bikes are built on the new Aprilia platform. This new RS660 platform, half of the RS34 engine, I'm getting sick of saying this now, 650 cc's, 100 horsepower, give or take. If five horsepower if you're on the Tuono perhaps. <laughs> I don't know, these feel exactly the same horsepower to ride. Both got loads of go. I've just stepped off of the RS660 and I'd convinced myself after riding that bike I much preferred the RS660. So I started this video with a slightly biased view in my head that the RS660 is better. I've now got on the Tuono and thought, now hang on a minute, this is also very nice. <laughs> so I really, at the moment, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know which one's best. I don't know. So we're going to ride this on this set of twisties, the same set of twisties I rode the RS660 on, and we're going to see how this feels. One thing you notice straight away between these bikes, obviously the chassis is the same, the engine's identical, you know, the swinging arms the same. They are more or less identical, apart from some very subtle changes. The main difference on the Tuono is the front wheel is closer to the radiator. It's got an, a, a, a shorter rake, which makes the bike feel a lot more nimble and a lot lighter than what the RS660 feels like. The RS660 feels more like a full-on sports bike. You know, it, it feels heavier. Um, it, it takes more effort to change direction. Because that wheel's closer on this, it feels really nimble, really darty. It feels every bit as heavy as its 183 kilos which isn't much, <laughs> it feels very light. <laughs> those tyres, those Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2s are very nice. Woo! The Tuono has softer feeling suspension now that could be to do with the way the twiddlies are twiddled. I mean, these only have preload and and rebound and dampening basically. So you got rebound and so you got compression and rebound dampening just built into one rebound ad adjuster. Hello, it's a fellow an RSV4. Or was it a Tuono? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did look at the end of bars. Hello, sir. The RS660, of course, comes with the blipper and the quick shifter. Very nice, it is too. Very good system. Works faultlessly, absolutely faultlessly. And you don't get that on the Tuono. You have to change manually. Oh, oh, the poor scum having to change manually. But the good news is it is an option. So it doesn't come standard, it is optional. I don't know how much it is, but you've got to have it. You've got to have the quick shifter and blipper. Why they took it off? Leave it on, Aprilia. Don't take it off. Uh, hello. Yes, yeah, so there is someone wants to overtake, you know. You don't own the whole road. A quick shifter and blipper is one of those things you don't miss it until you haven't got it. If you haven't got it, you don't know what you're missing. And you'll probably say, yeah, but you don't need one. I don't I'm quite happy to change manually. I don't want an automatic bike. You know, I just do a rev match. I, I, I just I just close the throttle and kick it up. I don't use the clutch. I don't need a quick shifter. 
until you've had a bike with one and the blipper is even better I think the blipper is even more fun and rewarding than the quick shifter but until you've ridden a bike which has had one you don't miss it and then comparing this to the Trono I, it didn't have the quick shifter and blipper I rode that bike first I didn't really miss it until I rode this and I realised how much I like a quick shifter and blipper so uh, if I was buying the Tuono, I'd definitely pay the extra, get the quick shift and blipper. You've got power to do that over crests and stuff. Give it a blip, get it up, you know? It's got that sort of punch, which I didn't think it would even with a big fatty on it. So which one do I prefer in town, in traffic? Well, they're much of a muchness really. The Toronto is slightly more comfortable than the RS660. You've got, you know, even though this is a, a very high bars on this bike, you still do have a little bit of weight on your wrists. It's acceptable, you know, compared to a Super Sport or a litre bike, it's incredibly good. But there is still a little bit of weight on your wrist. You don't get that with the Tuono. You're perfectly upright. You're perfectly comfortable from a wrist perspective. Yes, I know. Before everyone shouts in the comments, you should be gripping the bike with your legs, not relying on your arms. That is, of course, very true. But when you brake, you can't take all the weight through your body. You have to take a little bit on your arms. I don't care what you say. And uh, you, you do get a tiny little bit of weight on your wrist with this, but it's fine. I, I can certainly live with it. All right, let's go to the dynamic mode. Let's go to the individual mode. The beauty, you see, AWC disabled. That's because on the RS660, you can turn off the wheelie control, but still have the traction control on. And that's because this bike has an IMU. This has an IMU to detect when the bike's leaning and I think that's why you could disable the wheelie control only on this because it knows when the wheel's coming up because it's got an IMU. If you haven't got an IMU, it can only detect that by the wheel speed changing, you know, the front wheel slowing down. So with the IMU it detects that actually the bike is lifting. This is the bike you're probably going to be popping more wheelies on than the RS660 but you have to turn your traction control off fully to do that on this but do you really need to worry too much about traction control with 100 horsepower and I completely agree but this bike is very punchy and I think the only reason you'll need the traction control is if you were to go around the corner a bit of gravel you go on the power it's punchy enough to break traction and potentially high side even with 100 horsepower so I know, you know, all that traction, all that electronics on the middle way, it's unnecessary. And I do agree, a lot of situations it is. But I think this could be perhaps the exception to the rule because it's so punchy and it makes you ride it fast as well. It eggs you on to tr push it around the bend. So traction control, why not? Comfort on the Tuono is very good. It, it, it is the more comfortable bike out of the two. Without question, it's the more comfortable bike out of the two. But the RS660 does have quite high clip-ons anyway. So yeah, there is more comfort here. <laughs> it changes direction. Bloody beautifully effortless. Effortless to change direction on this. Brakes are also fantastic on both bikes. Very, very good feedback from the brakes, you know. Exceptional. Actually, I think this could be the more agile, the more flickable out of the two bikes. I really do. I, th I think you can maybe, these sorts of twisty little tight turny roads, high beams on again, because of that front wheel where they brought it in on this, it's really changes direction on a 10 pence piece, maybe even a 5 pence piece. It's very, very sharp. I think it's sharper than the, uh, the RS. The suspension does feel a little bit more comfortable as well. It's not quite as harsh as it is on the RS660. It feels harder on that. The thing I love about the RS660 is you've got the wind protection. You've got a full fairing. You know, the Tuono is naked and it's got the bikini fairing. And I think you're just missing, you know, I think that half fairing puts more wind at your chest than not having it. Whereas a fully fared bike, 
it's much better from a wind you know you can sit at the motorway 90 miles an hour in perfect comfort when you've got a full fairing like that obviously it gives you some weather protection as well because this bike isn't too extreme on the handlebars as soon as you're up to 40 miles an hour you don't know you've got any weight on your wrist at all and it's very very comfortable not as comfortable as the Tuono but I, I prefer this position I think to a full naked I think the uh, having this sporty position brings much more feel to the bike it just you know you can get out the seat more as you go around bends I think it's more engaging this riding position and with the slightly raised bars you're not compromising comfort too much you are a little bit but not too much I uh, I would I would I prefer this position I think to the Tuona and I think it makes with the fairing that gives the bike more bulk the bike looks bigger it looks like a bigger bike with the fairing the Tuono does look like a middleweight it looks like a middleweight bike but with this with the fairing it gives it that extra bit of length and a bit more width and it actually doesn't look like a middleweight it looks like a full-on litre sports bike it's the same size and I love that well, a bit more gravel, pick your line very carefully. Mid-range is impressive though. You don't have to scream it all the time. I mean, I've yet to really scream this bike and it's perfectly happy to play in the mid-range. Perfectly happy. so much fun why aren't there more proper middleweight middleweight bikes to buy these days such good fun They're both little hooligans. Absolutely little hooligans. The brakes are so good on this. There's nothing gives you more confidence than having fantastic brakes. There's nothing makes you push on harder than probably what you should be, than have it knowing you've got fantastic brakes with an amazing feel. And that's exactly what you've got here. And that really gives you the confidence to open it up and and push on don't do it mr wicks personally i do prefer the rs660 to the torono i think the torono is fantastic but i do think it's got a very middleweight feel to it to the look and the size of it i can't see people selling their litre sports bikes and buying the 660 torono but I very much could see people selling their litre sports bikes and buying the RS660. Um, other differences between these bikes, there's not a lot really, you know. Engine, I'm going to say identical. Slight change on the forks. No IMU, but you know, it's all about that riding position really. That is the only real difference between these machines. And the, and the Tuono has it for agility and comfort of course so I was all geared up to say actually give me the RS660 any day of the week over the two but after jumping on this now I'm really not sure I'm really really not sure so how do we answer the question which I posed at the beginning of this video which should you buy this or the RS660 it's uh it's really hard it's really really hard to answer that you know I can only answer which one I would buy and I'm not even sure I'm not even sure I think in my heart of hearts I think I'd get the RS660 because that bike feels like a, a bigger machine and this is brilliant and uh, when after riding the RS660 this morning I was like this is better this is way better but getting back on this, I now realise that 
the main difference with this bike is it's a lot more flickable it feels a lot lighter it changes direction really well so this could possibly depending on the sort of road you ride on this could possibly be faster than the rs660 through the tight twisty roads we've been on today this is would be quicker you know this is this is more comfortable but i think because i'd want to do track days and stuff if i had one of these i think the rs660 would be the better bike if you want to go on track i'm not saying this won't work on track because it will but you're going to run out of suspend it's just going to find the limits quicker on this than what you would on the rs660 and i think ultimately on track you'd have more fun on the rs660 where this is better on the road and that is what this bike is isn't it this is what the Tuono is it's the the ultimate road bike that's the that's the goal of it so it is this the ultimate middleweight road bike that is what we're going to find out because i am actually testing next the Tuono versus the street triple r both those bikes very similar price so how does the street triple r stack up against the Tuono. The Street Triple R is actually slightly cheaper than nine, you know, I think that's 9,100, this is 9,700. The uh, RS660 is 10,150. So Street Triple R compared to this, that is going to be very, very interesting. So if you want to see that and you're not a subscriber, you need to subscribe so you can see all of these new videos. So click that button, ding dong that bell, as Bruce would say and I will see you on the next video. This is power level one, which is full power. It's that one. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind get beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,